One can certainly have foraminal stenosis on both sides of the neck, but it's more common for patients to present with one-sided symptoms. When it comes to treatment, the two conditions are going to be treated very differently. Treatment for central cervical stenosis will vary greatly depending on the extent of symptoms and the extent of cervical cord compression. In severe cases with lots of cervical compression, sometimes the spinal cord just has to be surgically decompressed because otherwise the patient has too great a risk of becoming paralyzed from the neck down. In less severe cases, the treatment becomes more nuanced. The only way to reverse central stenosis is to surgically decompress the neck. If the stenosis doesn't require that, the best way to slow down the progression of cervical central stenosis is to learn and perform exercises to help take the pressure off the cervical spine. Injections don't have a large role in treating central cervical stenosis, causing a myelopathy. In fact, they really don't have any role at all there. High velocity manipulations to the neck should not be done because the spinal cord is already in such a compromised position and you don't want to take the chance of making that worse, which could be catastrophic. When it comes to cervical pyramidal stenosis, the treatment approach is very different. Physical therapy is still used to help unload the spine. Here though, if the symptoms are significant, an injection can be used under x-ray guidance to remove or reduce the inflammation from around the nerve root. When this is accomplished, exercises can then be used to improve the biomechanics to help prevent a return of the inflammation. When conservative care fails, or if there is progressive neurologic deficits like worsening weakness, surgical decompression of the foramina can also be performed. It's important to recognize that patients can certainly have both foraminal and central stenosis, 